Hello, Colin. How are you? Hi, hi, great. How are you today, Joe? I'm good. Uh, so this is Colin Nyanhongo, and he's going to talk to us about his incredible sculptures that he creates. And how about, I'm going to back off, back up so that you can take your mask off. All right? Okay. <laughs> and I'll zoom in. Mm -hmm. And so, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what kind of sculpture do you make? Well, this I, I make um, uh, Shona sculptures, uh -huh. and basically they are abstract, uh, just a fusion of um, um, of Shona tradition um, and in an abstract way. Mm -hmm. Yes. And can you uh, explain a little bit uh, what is the Shona tradition? And uh, and then maybe how you learned how to sculpt? Well, yes, Shona is um, a language that is spoken in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. That's the main language. We have other languages, you know, but uh, Shona is, is the main one. And uh, that is what is also used in schools. Um, so when they started the sculpture movement, which was there in the 12th, 13th hundred. Um, and then it kind of like silence, and then it reimages again um, in the 19th century. You know, and uh, when it emerges, um, it happens that um, the couple of uh, guys in Zimbabwe. Uh, with the likes of Jerome Mariga, uh, Mukomberanwa, Munyaradzi, Nyanongo, my father, Claude, they were like the first pioneers who started the, the movement. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, they just called it Shona Sculpture. Okay. That's how the name Shona Sculpture came up about. But uh, generally, there are other people from other cultures uh -huh. who also do stone sculpture. So that's how it came about to be Shona sculpture. I see. And so your father was one of these pioneers? Yes, yes, he was. Claude Nyanongo? Claude Nyanongo. Nyanongo. Yes. And uh, so how did you learn from, how did you learn to sculpt like this? Um, I learned sculpting uh, from my father, Claude. Uh -huh. um, he he grew up also very artistic, and he did uh, blacksmith with metal, and he did with wood. And finally, when the stone images, you know, he was also one of them who just you know get into it, you know, because he was already very creative man and um, so he just started sculpting with the, the likes of Joram Mariga and um, it happened that the discovery of this kind of stone which can be sculpted it was right thereby in um, our community nearby my, my father's uh, house uh -huh. so yeah interesting and so did he just did you go to art school? Did your father just start teaching you? I mean, how did you become the artist that you are now? Uh, yes, my father taught me. You know, I um, just grew up in it. I have brothers and sisters uh, whom we just were taught by our father. You know, basically it started, you know, with uh, the, 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 the eager to know what father is doing and wanting to be around him uh -huh. and then he that's when he sh he saw that we have the interest you know to learn uh -huh. and then he started like giving us you know some small stones to say okay do your, your yours here and do yours here but eventually when he inspects what we were doing uh, as you get better then he would um, 
give you his work and show you how to do it and then that's how we started learning uh -huh. and um, eventually we, we, we started to do some exhibitions all over the world. Yeah, yeah. great. Um, excuse the dog barking. Hi Jonathan. <laughs> um, so can you tell us a little bit about the two pieces that you have here on the table? Um, here I have, these sculptures are all from stone sculptures. Uh -huh. Yes, and uh, this is called uh, spring stone. And it has such a great characteristics that you, you can put some textures and the contrast from the texture to the fine finish. Uh-huh. Yes, and uh, like for example, this one here is called um, visionary, you know, so my depiction about that, you know, is a visionary is a person who, who foresee things that needs to be done and he go for it uh -huh. to make it happen or to make it be. So this, this is the, the person the visionary and normally those kind of people are like very special people who normally like God you know gives ideas to them and they have the ability to pursue those ideas that comes to them mm. so so what I just wanted to depict also is if you look on the other side of the stone of the sculpture no, there's there's this ball and the floor which is coming out you know and I was just wanting to depict this as like the source mm. like there is something behind you that gives you the drive and and, and uh, that guides you you know to achieve those things yeah so this is basically uh, you know like you was now hearing that it's a fusion of of, of uh, tradition and also with the the, the 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 knowledge of of God who gives us the ability to do things so this is re representing the sphere where it is like a source of what we people do yeah and what about the hand? Does that have a symbolic meaning in this in this piece? Um, yes, you know the hand, and as you are seeing it, the way I designed it is to kind of like hold on to what you believe in, and to what you know, you know, guides you and and, and leads you. That's that's the symbolic of, of the hand. You that's know, really like powerful. You you have to like hold on to what you know and what you believe hold on to god absolutely yes and then what is this one about uh this is this is a mother and a child uh, -huh. uh you know also just depicting you know all over the world the mother love and um uh, how how much they do care for everybody goes through this process even if you are a mighty man but you pass through the nurturing through your mother mm -hmm. and that's what I just wanted to depict you know the, the, the strength of uh, the love yeah. that uh, uh, women give to the world so how do you come up with these ideas for these sculptures because well let me first ask in your lifetime Colin how many sculptures have you carved, do you think? Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I would just approximate, I tell you, you know, like how many sculptures I have made. I lost the count, um, but- More than so 100? Many. Oh, like maybe more than 500. Wow. Yeah, more than 500. So with these two right here that you just explained, you have very strong ideas behind them and the concept, so where do you get your ideas well you know that's that's also quite interesting uh because i also don't even know where where it comes from you know 
but what I just have learned is something that comes through me to the world. Yeah. Yes, because I am also, at most cases, be surprised with the outcomes of, of the sculptures. Mm. And worst more of it, I'm even surprised when people look at my sculptures and how much the magnitude that they are touched with the sculptures. Like, in, for instance, you know, like they actually depict what they are going through uh -huh. or what they have experienced in the past, you know, which, which really make them, you know, have tears in their eyes and, and, and like be attached to them. So then that made me to say, well, what I do, you know, I, I don't know, it's just for sure through God, you know, who, who that makes it come through me so that it can go to the world. So that experience of seeing the people who see and witness your art and having your concepts magnified like that, that must feel tremendous and be very inspiring. I would think as an artist, I would be inspired to just run home and start my next piece. Yes, you know, and um, I tell you, of course, this, this work is a, a little bit like, like tiring work you know like like uh -huh. manually to to do it yeah you know but it always calls me back the next day even how exhausted I am uh, when I when I finish the day but yeah. the next day I feel well rejuvenated and ready to, to, to go for it again you know so it, it the energy just comes to me and, and I feel like going on and, and on and on doing doing it you know that's that's really um, great passion you know that I feel you know in, in doing sculpture oh I love that it's a good thing because is being an artist easy for me it, it is easy uh -huh. uh, it is easy well but you know there are some other aspects you know that comes with it um, that you know um, you just have to believe in yourself mm. you know because if, if you don't then the other people will not believe in you I see. and if you also don't believe in the work that you do then it is also not really recepted out there mm. so it always start with you you know to put the energy in the sculpture and, and, and believe in it you know that this uh, is gonna you know transform people's lives and uh, also you know when, when you I am making the sculpture I go through a great conversation with the stone mm. through touching it looking at it feeling it you know and and during that process is the process when I it reveals itself to me it speaks to me and um, therefore, the sculpture comes. Let's see. Yeah. So, given that, uh, is this something that you are currently working on here? Yeah. This this is um, currently like uh, my work in progress. Uh huh. Um, this is also out of uh, Springstone. Uh huh. And. Uh, is this stone from here or did you bring this from Zimbabwe? No, I brought this from, from Zimbabwe. Wow. Yeah. And a long um, way. so how how this one is gonna be um, is it's worldwide that we we are a family. So it always you know comes you know through this. I didn't even have an idea that I'm going to make this sculpture like this, but uh -huh. The moment I start working on a stone, then it tells me what it wants to be. Mm. I, I give it, you know, I, I, I know artists, they do differently, but myself, I just 
wait to have a conversation with the stone so mm. that I can come out the stone. So I never knew this is what is gonna come out, but as I start working on it and talking to it, no, then it, it reveals itself and yeah. then I have to, to bring it out. So this is gonna be a family. I see. You know? Mm -hmm. So um, being a family, but at, at the other point in time when I was working, then I would even see that, wow, it's also even depicting a full hand, a hand, mm -hmm. you know, which, which means we need, when, when unity just needs to be a full hand, you know, like you, you need to, uh, to associate uh, togetherness and unity as a hand, full, that, that, that helps if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. So, because this will also depict a hand, you know, which, which, um, yeah. And I decided, you know, just to put also, like, you, you can see on the, on the bag, this is going to be, like, on a form of, like, um, a wing. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, I You see know, uh -huh. which will be, like, it's, it's, it's a blessed hand, mm. you know, in, in, in another way, you know, so it's, it's, the hand that that blesses I see. and this is all what we need you know a hand is is sort of giving you know so either uh, financially or even materially or, or or just by by advice uh, it's, it's all like giving mm -hmm. so that's what it symbolizes that's great. So it has like that one meaning from the back and the meaning from the front with the hand and the family. And then it's kind of all the unified together yes. with the, the family, the hand, the assistance, the belonging and the wing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. We need to you know, especially with this time of, of, of uh, the pandemic we are having. Yeah. You know, we need one another, you know, to do to, to help. You know, and uh, once you help somebody, great things will come your way. So this is this is what I also wanted to, to depict. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So um, I wanted to uh, maybe you can. I see you have your tools here. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can kind of briefly go over your process. How so you start. yeah, <laughs> no. Basically, when I am starting, when I'm making a sculpture. Uh, it basically starts with a, a punch, uh -huh. uh, a pointed one with a hammer, which I will be like, just really shaping the the, the stone. Yeah. You know, like by chipping away, you know, yeah. building, taking away uh, what is not necessary to bring up the sculpture. So this is one of the main differences from working with clay versus what you do working with stone is your method is entirely subtractive. Exactly. Because you take away material. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we, we take away material to bring up the, 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 the object. So you really have to see that object inside that stone. Exactly. Otherwise, <laughs> you might be chipping away a very important part. And then part. Uh, you can chip away uh, too much yeah. where you cannot even put it back again right but so you need to be very calculative and normally with the sculpture you need to have courage because if you are not courageous you will not do anything because you will be afraid <laughs> of maybe chipping too much yeah or maybe not chipping enough or something like that so but you just need to to to, to go for it you know and once you are tuned you 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 can actually just like hammering without even looking where where I'm talking to you like this and I'm yeah. hammering and I'm I know where I'm going and what I'm doing. Wow. And so like you can see this effect which yes. is right here is through this um Oh yeah, it's got this, this moves. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this this is through you know where I I chip. Yeah. You know. Like that. So you need to, to it, it, it takes time, you know, to, to do it, to make this effect come out very good. Mm -hmm. You take your time. And because if you are not on the right uh, positioning, uh -huh. it's either you also dig deep too much. Yes. 
you know, or you don't even maybe hit that you can take away things, you know. So you, you need to, to calculate so that it, it comes so even like it is. And then after that, this is, I use uh, a chisel. Uh -huh. Which one is uh, flat and sharp? Yes. And this is what I use to design the wing, mm. like that. So this is this is what 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 I use, not the yeah. with the chisel on on doing that, and um, uh, basically, and then the other two that I normally use, you know. Is, is the rasp uh -huh. uh, as you can see it's, it's, it's this is much coarse and here it's a little bit finer yeah and uh, that's it has the effect you know if I have done it like this here and so like do you choose the spring stone because it is it a softer stone and you feel comfortable and know how to work with it well, I imagine that you work with all kinds of stones. Yes, yes, I work with all kinds of stone, but spring stone is uh, it's very very strong, uh -huh. and um, it it uh, you you are quite assured, you know, that the product will last forever, you mm. know, despite maybe if it is knocked down, yeah. but even sometimes if it is not too delicate, it would not break, you know, because mm. the stone is very good, right. and it cannot be scratched just easily. And um, so it's, it's very good to work on and it's very strong as well. And as well as other stones, you know, like um, uh, the Lapidolite or Vedite, those ones are even much special because they are semi-precious. And sometimes they are even way harder than springstone. Mm. Yes, and uh, then we have also Opal, uh, which comes in different um, uh, color. Yeah. And we have serpentine, which also comes in either brown or green serpentine. Mm. You know, so it's quite a, a variety of stones that, that we use. I see. Yeah. And then, this is an interesting, so I see this torch. <laughs> what mm -hmm. are you going to do with the torch? Well, the, the torch, is this is will be like on the final stages uh -huh. now of... Uh, of, 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 of making the sculpture yeah uh, because after I have done this rasping and and firing mm -hmm. then I will I will I will do use like if you can see close after a file this is gonna be like much more smoother uh -huh. from the rasp and then so when I get to this stage then I use um, sand peppers, uh -huh. which I which have got different grits with water, you know, and I sand it until it's very, very highly uh, pol uh, polished, kind of. So, and then at that stage is when I can use uh, a propane tank with uh, the wax. Uh -huh. This is uh, the wax that I use. This is just kind of like a floor, a wood. Or, or, or furniture yeah. polishing mm -hmm. um, so it just like enhances the, is that the, color. the uh, so so that's the one that I apply mm -hmm. uh, and then it brings me up the, the, the shiny but I have done all the smoothing by sanding yeah and then this enhances the color of the stone so does the, the wax makes it also darker uh, yes, it makes it darker. It just stay even water. Mm -hmm. If I put water here, it shows you that it's darker, but water evaporates, right. and then it comes again to gray. But when I put wax, then it is absorbed into the stone because I first of all heat the stone um, with this propane tank, oh, I so see. that. The stone has temperature, and when I put wax, it is absorbed inside, right, right. and then that makes it to stay for a long time when it's when it, when it, when it's inside. And also, if you let this in the sun, especially in areas like in Arizona where it's like super hot, the all this will eventually like go away. 
mm. you know it will be like absorbed you know and also go away because of the heat you know but uh, if it is kept in indoors it will just stay like that I see mm -hmm. yes what a process so just to give uh, my students an estimate of time so this one which is the visionary about how many hours do you think that sculpture takes from the beginning until it being completed yeah well normally the time aspect of making a sculpture always determined by by you you know how how strong you are or how much you can push mm. work done yeah uh, but otherwise this will even take about uh, two months Wow. Working, working on, on, on this one, um, but uh, depending on, on how much you, you your body grows, mm -hmm. because maybe you know if, if 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 you if you can push more work to, to do, then the less time it will be you know in making it. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. So, uh, in closing, tough question: Do you have any advice for my? students who are embarking on either sort of some of their beginning stages of being an artist or maybe they've been at it a couple years and they're learning do you have any advice for them okay yes um i my advice for the the students who feels they have the passion to be an artist um, I tell you, the sky is the limit because it's, it, it starts with you when you really feel you, you have the passion and you like to do this, I tell you, it will come through you. It will come through you and all you need is, is just to be there and to, to listen because normally, truly speaking, um, artists, they they really um, are chosen, and it's not just somebody who just do it just for for you to to earn a living. Mm. But you know, it's something that just calls you to you know to to do it. And when even you see things, you see it way differently than anybody else. And and when you think you think way differently than anybody else. You know, this is very true. And you know, we, we can't run away from it, but those who, who feels that way, pursue it. And especially with the stone sculpture, um, despite they say, you know, uh, artists, you know, they, they are always poor, but when you have the passion and when you do it, the, the line is there, you know, it will always you know, lead you to the next stage and the next way of doing it. I have um, exhibited uh, so many places from Australia so many times, in London, in Germany, different cities, and um, here in, in America, different states, um, and all those it wasn't like my, my, my plans, you know, like, but I could feel from the beginning that I have, I have a dream. Mm. And um, I could just foresee myself in, in, in doing um, a lot of big sculptures. And those have already materialized that I have done commissions, you know, at high schools in Germany. And I have some public sculptures which are at the hospitals, you know, or in the in the uh, cities, you know, with the public art. Mm -hmm. So I encourage you to go for it, you know, because you know it's not only about uh, getting money, but it's like uh, taking out what is inside you and share it to the world. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time and sharing your art form and your beautiful work with us. And we wish you the best. You are welcome. I feel welcome. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Today.